Welcome to today's webinar, Five Free Tools and Resources to Improve Workplace Safety, brought to you by the Journey to Safety Excellence Team at the National Safety Council. Allow me to introduce today's speaker. Dr. Amy Harper has been in the field of safety and health for nearly 20 years, having spent the majority of her career developing and delivering products and services in the insurance industry. She has been with the National Safety Council for three years and is currently the Journey to Safety Excellence and Workplace Strategy Director. In her role, she oversees the planning, execution, and promotion of the Council's Journey to Safety Excellence campaign. She is also responsible for crafting the long-term strategy for the future of workplace safety at NSC. Now I'll turn it over to our speaker to tell you more about the Journey to Safety Excellence and the free resources available to you. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, it's good afternoon, I guess, for some of you on the East Coast, and good morning for everyone else. Um, I'm going to spend the next uh, several minutes going through the Journey to Safety Excellence tools and resources. Um, <clears throat> just a little bit about the Journey initiative. Um, why did we do it? Well, this, this initiative is about two years old. We actually just celebrated our two-year anniversary um, on September 15th, so we're just two years old. Um, and the National Safety Council really wanted to be able to provide a way to have companies access some basic safety tools and resources, some safety measurement tools, some good articles, um, e-tools, you know, kind of the best of the best of what's out there, and have a way for people to access that free of charge. Um, we also wanted to do this for non-NSC members. NSC is a membership organization, uh, so to become members there, um, there is a fee. But the Journey to Safety Excellence is our way to sort of relay some of the safety information outside of our membership for free. Um, and so one of the reasons we did this was because a lot of companies don't have um, someone with safety background, someone with formal safety training uh, in charge of their facility. They have people who are perhaps HR or finance or operations folks who have safety responsibilities. And we wanted to provide a way for those folks to be able to, uh, to, be able to access you know, really good, credible safety information. And so the Journey to Safety Excellence website helps fill that gap. Um, I have on the slide here how you join if you haven't already. Um, so you can register for free at nsc.org forward slash journey. And that will be at the end of the presentation as well. So um, that's a little bit about the backdrop of why we're doing this. Um, some common attributes of safety excellence that we see, and you know, we see and work with a lot of companies uh, over the years. We are a 100 plus year organization. So we have a lot of history of working with organizations. Um, we have the Campbell Institute, which is our sort of our think tank or our world-class safety uh, group of companies. We learn a lot from them, and we see through our Campbell Award every year people apply for that, and companies will go through this rigorous sort of assessment process. We're able to glean a lot of information about what makes companies really great at safety. And so I have on this slide sort of what the common attributes are. And I bring this up because it really does funnel into why we came up with the Journey to Safety Excellence model, which I'll discuss on the next slide. So the first thing we usually see is a, a top-down commitment uh, to safety. So managers at all levels of the organization, they're committed to safety. We also see that companies that are great at safety and have great safety records, They'll find ways to engage workers. They'll get them involved in safety committees. They'll get them involved in doing audits or uh, walkthroughs, um, inspections, serving on safety committees, both managers and workers. And so they find ways of, of pulling them into the safety conversation. Um, we, the other thing we see is reliable and consistent safety management systems, which are integrated into business operations. So safety doesn't sit sort of on the side and separate from all the other business processes. Safety is part of every process um, that goes into either making a product or delivering a service. Um, the other thing is we have companies that focus on risk. So instead of focusing on a loss, for example, 
um, or an injury or an illness or things that have happened, there, are, there is a, a focus on kind of going a little bit further upstream and saying what could happen. Uh, what could happen? What's the risk involved in doing this activity? And how do we make sure that those um, incidents don't happen? And so it's going a further upstream and focusing on risk and not really measuring yourself based on uh, the number of incidents that have happened, but how much risk are you able to reduce in your workplace? The, the next thing that companies who are great at safety do, they use both what we call leading and lagging performance measurements. Lagging performance measurements would be like measuring your incident rates. So that's kind of a measuring your lack of safety, if you will. Um, and they definitely want to do that because that is one measure of safety. But um, many of these companies use what we call leading indicators uh, for safety, and those are things like two of the tools we're going to show you today. They could take an assessment on their safety management system and look at the score and how those change over time, or they could look at a safety perception survey uh, of the employees that work in your facility to see whether or not those change over time as well. So it goes a little further upstream. Uh, going back to the previous bullet, the, the risk, there are many methods out there for quantifying risk for different tasks in your organization, and you can measure the, the implementation of what you do to reduce that risk. There are ways for you to measure that change in risk um, and quantify it. Um, so those would be available. Some of those tools are available on the website should you register. So those are just some ways of looking that, at that. And then the, the final bullet here is companies really have an appreciation for the value of safety to their bottom line. They recognize that good business equals good safety and vice versa. So those are just a few of the, the things that we've been able to glean from different customers we've worked with over the years that have really great safety records. So from that, and also based on some of the guidelines and um, uh, like ISO and ANSI kinds of standards, we have been able to put together what we call the Journey to Safety Excellence Model. And we have four pillars in the middle. And the four pillars, these are going to look very familiar to the previous slide. We have leadership and engagement, safety management systems, risk reduction, and performance measurement. And there are a lot of different topics or subtopics within each of those four pillars. But we, we say, you know, if companies are really going to excel at safety, these are the four things that they really need to do well uh, and be sort of operating on all cylinders. The circle around this is really nothing, you know, that's new. You've probably seen this. It's a continuous improvement process. And so you start in the orange, uh, with the orange arrow where you determine gaps and set goals. Our measurement tools will help you sort of identify where those gaps might be. Um, and then you kind of move along through that cycle where you can develop improvement plans, implement those plans, capture the lessons learned, measure and remeasure, and you kind of start all over. And so what we tried to do within the Journey to Safety Excellence website and the tools that are there is to really help you find out where you are currently. Um, the measurement is a big piece because we definitely want you to see both from a lagging indicator and a leading indicator perspective where you are currently. Where is your culture uh, for each location you may be responsible for? And so those questions on the outside of the circle, starting at the upper right, where are you now and where do you want to be, that, that's kind of the, the fundamental question. If you've already done some measurement and you know kind of what you need to do and what you need to focus on, then you might go to the next question, how do you move forward? And we have some tools and resources available online by topic that can help with some of the, um, the how-tos, if you will. And then finally, how do you manage your improvement and measure your progress? That has to do with remeasuring over time. So the tools that you do to find out where you are currently, you'll want to come back to those periodically, maybe every six months or every year, and remeasure to see if you've had improvement. And by doing that, you can add to your, your metrics you know, for safety that, that are a bit more in leading, leading indicators for safety. You can see where, how you've managed progress in addition to measuring the outcomes, which are your 
total recordable rates, your days away from work rates, and, and the like. So just quickly, the objectives of um, the Journey to Safety Excellence website and our, you know, our ability to reach out to folks. I'm not going to go through all of these here, but we, we definitely want to educate employers on the importance of safety. There's a lot of companies that um, maybe just haven't gotten that safety message yet, and so we want to offer some, some evidence that demonstrates the value of investing in safety. And I'll show you a couple of white papers in a slide or two that, uh, that you could definitely download from the site that may help you in either creating a business case for safety or uh, kind of summarizes the research we've been able to pull together that shows what the business value of investing in safety is. Um, we definitely want to provide a roadmap for continuous improvement so that you're not just stuck in one place or focused on losses or injuries that keep happening. We want to keep you moving forward, help you think about things a little bit differently. And so that's what um, this campaign is designed to do. We want to help you identify where your gaps are and then sort of plug in some resources to help you learn about how to move forward and unplug those gaps you know, and just make sure that those get cleared out and, and you uh, move forward. And then finally, we want to provide a mechanism for you to ask questions so that you can get some technically sound answers. And so we'll kind of review on the site how we have incorporated that. So I mentioned the, the two white papers. Um, these were published a couple of years ago. Um, I think I did a Congress presentation one year on the subject. Uh, where I kind of went through what the research showed and then kind of did a case study of like an example for how to build a business case. So those two documents are online, um, probably worth a read. The first one there with the executive, um, that's a lengthier read. Uh, it got, goes through all of the research that uh, we were able to get our hands on that shows you know, what, the, what the business outcome is. What's the research say about for example, um, ergonomics programs and how effective those are. Um, and so there's just a ton of research in there that might help you um, build your business case or talk to people in your C-suite um, or business owners to help, in, help them invest or make the decision to invest in safety. So those are available on the site. Um, we also have a, a resource guide, which is a general overview. I've given you a very brief synopsis of uh, you know, sort of what the journey model is about and how we came to it. There's a, a journey guide light, which is four pages long. But if you are an NSC member currently, we have a lengthier document for you. And that's 24 pages. And so it'll, it'll go into a little bit more depth about the, um, the program. So those are available online as well wanted to bring those to your attention. And then we have an infographic, which really takes all of the research from that business case, um, the, the research from the business case, and condenses it into a visual. Um, so the, the infographic might be good if you can post it to your website. I think we have a version that you could probably print out or um, you know, find a way to, we have some chunks there online to be able to graphically display you know, why safety makes good business sense. So that's available to you um, as well. And then finally, on some of these uh, tools that we're going to talk about, there's a little more in-depth information on each of these. I think those are even available on the public site um, at nsc.org forward slash journey. So if you needed any information about the tool in more depth, um, that is where you would want to look for those. So let's get into the five tools since we promised you five tools. And we're going to show you um, three measurement tools. We have an incident rate calculator. We have a self-assessment for um, safety management systems. And then we have an employee perception survey. Uh, we have the guides, which are really you know, sort of a, a grouping of about 300 resources by safety topic. Um, and those come from not just from NSC, those come from other reputable sources. So we might put things in there like some of the e-tools from OSHA, CPWR for you construction folks out there have some really great tools. Um, there's other places that we have pulled from to be able to provide you what we think is really good information on um, different safety topics. So there's training and webinars and articles, uh, tips and tools and things like that. So lots there to explore. And then finally, 
Uh, we'll, we'll talk through the engagement piece and how you can ask questions uh, on the site and get, uh, get some answers for your particular questions. So let's start with measuring performance. Since we said in the, our model that that's really important uh, to be able to measure where you are today, using both leading and lagging indicators, we wanted to make sure that we had tools that really helped with all of that. Um, we have a tool that will help take a snapshot of your safety culture in our employee perception survey. You can assess your safety management system and how well your safety program is really working. And you can calculate and graph incident rates and benchmark those against your industry um, using an NAICS code of up to six digits. If BLS reports on it, we have it in the, um, in the database to be able to pull that benchmark for you. So um, going to the Journey Home page, you will want to see this page, nsc.org forward slash journey. And if you are registering for the first time, you're going to want to see new to the journey, join today. You're going to click that button. And then from there on out, once you've registered, if you're just there to log in again, you're just going to click the login button. So this is just what the page looks like if you haven't already been there. Um, going to the tools page, you'll notice there's a navigation on the right side. Let me get my arrow here. Here's the navigation on the right side. And so you'll want to go to Journey Tools. And when you click on Journey Tools, you're going to see sort of a description of each of the three tools that we have. And then there's usually a green bar at the bottom that will say Access the Tool. And it'll say JSC Joiners Only. And so that's just indicating to you that you need to log in first. Uh, to be able to get to these tools. So when you click on any of the tools, you will get to this dashboard. And this is not designed to be an eye chart, but I just wanted to orient you to sort of what you will be seeing because it looks a little bit different than the pages you're on. And this is because this is built in our NSC Navigator product. And these three tools are all accessible from this dashboard. So let's get started on um, the sort of the first thing that you'll want to do here is add a location. And so location, let me just say a word about what we mean by location. Location can mean a physical four wall kind of a operation, um, you know, in a city, in a state. But location can mean whatever you want it to mean. So that can mean it can be an entire department within a location. Um, it could be a team within a department or a location. Um, so however you want to define location, it's really up to you, and you get to name it. So the location name you'll see is, is here. You just basically name it whatever you want to name it. You can put the city and state if it helps you remember you know, what, what, you, uh, what you have in the system. And then when you name a location, you're going to have to pull up an NAICS code. You're going to associate that location with the primary business that you do at that location. And so if you have any questions and you don't know what your NAICS code is, here under where it says Add a New Location, there's a website, naics.com forward slash search. And you can put in some keywords, and it will bring up some uh, options for you to select which NAICS code um, is most closely matches what you do. So if you don't know it, it's here. You can plug that number in, and it will pull the benchmark in your incident rate calculator. So that's why you're naming an NAICS code, is so that it can pull the right benchmark for your uh, incident rate calculator tool. So our number one tool here is incident rate calculator. And this is what it's going to look like. You're going to enter your incident rate data. Now some of you might have this tool in some other form or from some other um, place. We just wanted to make one available that was very basic in nature that graphed your data. And so um, where it becomes important to graph your, your data is if you have you know, more than a handful of incidents in a given year, you may want to see if there's any seasonality to it. You might want to see if there's any trends. And if, if for nothing else, you'll want to see how you compare to your industry benchmark. Um, so if you have one or two losses in a year, it may not be as helpful to you. 
uh, to put their, your data in here other than to pull the benchmark um, from the BLS data. So you can do that. You can decide not to, but if you have more than a handful of losses, it definitely would, um, would be a worthwhile endeavor if you don't already have a tool like this. So you click on Enter Incident Rate Data, and below that you'll see the screen where you're going to enter the data. Now you can enter in historically uh, up to, uh, I think up to five years of historical data. Uh, you do have to do it month by month. You could do it quarter by quarter, but I, I would recommend doing it month by month even if some of the months you don't have any losses just because you'll, you'll see the trend over time. So you are going to pick the location that you just added, or you can add it in this screen. It will let you do it from either spot. And then you're going to enter in the month end date. So every month that you enter, you're going to put in the month end date, the hours that were worked during that month, and then your recordable incident count and your cases um, with days away from work count. You'll hit Submit, and basically you'll just keep doing that for that location. You'll do month over month over month and, and enter in the data. So you can either do that and go in once a month and do it, or you, know, you might decide you want to load in a couple years worth of data you know, today, and you can see the, the previous two years, graph it, and then start to enter maybe quarterly, go back and do uh, you know, every quarter, enter in the previous three months of data. So it's up to you how you use it or how often you enter data, but monthly is probably the best that I could recommend. And then when you have some data, probably say more than, I would say at least four months of data uh, before you run a report, you'll want to come and select the report that you want to run. Now there's four reports available in the system. There's a total recordable case rate, um, and then there's the days away from work case rate. And then you have your benchmark reports for both of those as well. So when you run one of those reports, you'll get a graph that looks something like this. So um, I think this one on the left is the days away from work, and the one on the right is the total recordable case rate. Um, if you had a benchmark report, it would show that benchmark as a line across. It would be a straight line across um, your graph so that you would be able to see month to month. Are you better or worse than the benchmark? And it also, uh, you'll see these lines that kind of go up and down. Um, those are your monthly, your, your year to date rates. I'm sorry, those are your year to date rates. And the bar graphs are your monthly year to date. I'm sorry, your monthly. And then you'll see the graph, <clears throat> the chart down below that just shows you your raw data and what those, um, what those rates came out to be. So again, there's four different reports. Um, it's good to just sort of get maybe four or five months of data in there, run a report, make sure it's working for you correctly and is telling you what you, you think it's going to tell you and then continue on. So now we're on to the second tool, which is the safety system assessment. The safety system assessment really man uh, looks at your safety management systems and how healthy they are within your organization. It is a 69-item uh, question, questionnaire that's designed to be completed by the person, someone who knows about what is happening from a safety perspective at a location. So you don't want just anyone filling it out because some of the questions are very detailed and you would need to kind of be in the know or be a safety, someone with safety responsibilities at the location to be able to answer some of these questions. Um, but it's, it's a self-report type of tool. But again, it's a great place to start if you wanted to just start using one of the tools today, I would say this is a great one to go in and play with and start answering the questions. You're the one who sees them. You're the only one that's going to see the report. It doesn't get sent out to anybody. Uh, it's really designed for you to get a snapshot of where your safety management systems are and how you compare to others who have filled this out. So this is a benchmarking tool as well not by industry, but by other groups that have filled this out. We have about 500 other companies or 500 other individuals that have um, completed the assessment, so that is the benchmark that you would be, uh, be seeing. So I'll show you how that works in just a second. So to do this safety system assessment, on your dashboard, 
uh, when you get there, there's going to be this send a link to the safety system assessment. And what that's going to do, you're going to you know, put your location in or this little red pin on the outside, um, this little red pin on the outside of here um, allows you to add a location if you haven't already added one from the previous screen. And then you will get um, an email. So whatever email you use to register for the Journey to Safety Excellence, that's the email that you're going to get this safety system assessment email sent to. So the email comes and there's a little link in there that says start the assessment here. You click that. And when you click that, you're going to open up the 69 item assessment. And so the, the 69 questions really have to do with um, the four pillars that we talked about um, and some of the sub-pillars, I guess, that go, in, go into that. So you can see some of those are listed here um, on the screen. There's manage, management leadership and commitment. There's workforce involvement, uh, training and orientation, for example. And so all of those are measured as part of this, and the report out will also tell you how you scored in each of those sections. So the questions are answered on a one to five scale. And again, it's self-report. It's, you know, try to be as honest as you can with yourself about what is in place, because again, you're not going to be showing this necessarily to anyone. It's just to provide you with an idea of where you might want to uh, focus more of your efforts and attention at a, at a particular facility. So once you've completed the 69 items and submitted them, you're going to come back to your dashboard and you're going to click Report, Assessments and Surveys. You're going to pick your location for which you did the survey or the assessment. And where it says Select Survey, there's a drop down there that's either going to say Safety System Assessment or Employee Safety Perception Survey. So you're going to want to pick the Safety System Assessment because that's the report you want to run. And when you run that report, you're going to get a PDF that contains percentile scores. And you'll have percentile scores on the left there, that tornado looking type of graph um, is going to look at it by item. So all 69 items are going to be there in this red, yellow, and green um, sort of format. And what that red, yellow, and green means is there are percentile scores attached to each of those. So anything that scores under a 50th percentile is in the red. Anything between 50 and 75 is in the yellow. And anything 75 and above is in the green. And the percentile score means this. It just means that if you scored at the 75th percentile, it means that you scored higher than 75% of the other companies that filled out this, uh, this assessment. So it's a relative gauge from a benchmarking perspective on what that location seems to be doing well at. And the ones in the red are going to be things that, you know what, you might want to take a closer look at and see where you might have some room for improvement. The chart on the right will show you um, those categories or those factors <clears throat> and how you scored on each of those. And those are percentile scores for the, for the grouping of those 69 items. And then underneath is the pillar. So if you wanted to know, you know which one goes in safety management, there's three pillar or three factors that go into safety management systems. There's three that go into leadership and engagement. So I know it's a little hard to read on this screen, but that's, um, those are the, the types of uh, metrics that will come back in the safety system assessment. I'd say it probably takes about 20 minutes to complete. Um, so it's a nice, quick, easy tool to help guide you into where you might want to start focusing more of your efforts. <clears throat> okay, so tool number three is our Employee Safety Perception Survey. Some of you who are NSC members might be familiar with our Safety Perception Survey that is a, I think it's 50 items, might even be more than 50 items, that we do based on um, a fee basis. This is a subset of those questions. We took the 10 most reliable questions from that 50-item survey, and we condensed it into a very quick and easy employee perception survey that we could offer to you for free. And so there are 10 items here that you will, this works a little bit differently for the perception survey because you, as the person who has registered for the Journey to Safety Excellence, will be acting as an administrator of the survey. 
So it's slightly different, so let's walk through this. You're going to click Send Link to Employee Perception Survey. You're going to pick your location, um, and you're going to put a survey cutoff date. I usually like to leave surveys open for maybe two weeks at a time, but if you really want quick responses and people aren't on, uh, out on vacation or such, so you could put a week in there or 10 days. But two, two weeks is usually plenty uh, for people to respond. And so you can put a cutoff date um, that you desire. So that will come into play on this next screen. So what happens when you've done that and submitted it, you're going to get an email to the email that you registered, and it's going to have some sample language in here to use if you have uh, employee emails. So some of you work in industries where employees do have emails, and you could forward this on to employees. Some of, uh, some of the other folks that we've heard from you know, really have to either use paper and pencil, uh, or there's an option to use like a single computer in a particular like a training room and continue to you know, do the surveys uh, one by one on a computer that way. So there are multiple options for how you do this. The paper and pencil version, you would have to enter the data yourself being the person who has registered for the journey. So you're sort of signing yourself up for a little bit of administrative duty there if you, if you go that route. Um, but it certainly can, it can be done. So the sample email language is there. You can use it. You cannot use it. It's up to you. Um, where in the middle of that email you see the survey found here link um, with the blue, that is where you click to have it open. And you'll see the survey cutoff date with this arrow down here, the survey cutoff date that you enter gets put in here in the sample language to tell people you have until this date to, um, to complete the survey. So when you open up the survey, you'll get the 10 items. Um, this is just sort of a snapshot of what the questions might say. They're, um, again, a one to five rating for 10 questions. It, if it takes five minutes to do the 10 questions, it's probably too long. It, I don't think it takes much time at all. So if you want a quick snapshot of your safety culture and don't really want to do a full-blown survey, this is a great way to go about doing it um, so that each person will do this online. There's also a PDF version of this on the website. Once you've registered, you'll find the PDF version, so you can do a paper and pencil version. And then you'll go in and uh, enter that data manually if you do the paper and pencil version. And what you'll find um, with the electronic version is as the employees finish their surveys and submit them, you'll see in the lower right quadrant here there is um, a place that it counts up the surveys. So if you know there are 100 people at a particular location and you see that uh, like 36 um, surveys have come in, that's a pretty decent response rate. I would say 40% is probably a, about as good as you may get uh, unless you have a smaller department and sort of set an expectation for 100% involvement. Um, but you know you could, you could run a report if you got a 40% um, response rate. But this just allows you to eyeball how many responses you've gotten in um, to be able to run the report. Again, you won't be able to necessarily see any of the data uh, that people have put into the surveys, but you will see the count here. So when you are ready to run the report, you're going to go back to this Report Assessments and Surveys link on your dashboard. You're going to pick that location. And now in the drop-down where it says Select Survey, you're going to select Safety Perception Survey. And when you run that report, you're going to get this, um, this percentile score graph again. So it's going to show you again what the percentile score is for each item. And what this will tell you is which of the items score below you know, sort of that 50th percentile, which means like a 27th percentile, you only scored higher than 27% of the respondents. There are over 500 companies whose employee responses are in here. I think uh, all told we have, uh, I think we have over several million employee responses in our database from all of the surveys we've done. So there are quite a few, this is a very stable database, um, a stable benchmark. Um, and so this is really a good way to gauge where your culture is compared to other companies who've done this.
<clears throat> the other way you can use this tool is not only just by a single location, but if you're responsible for multiple locations, or even if you're not, you can have your, you know, uh, your, your um, colleague do this for their location, and you can compare notes and compare reports. These are PDFs. They can be emailed uh, to whoever you decide to email them to, or you can keep the results for yourself. Um, one of the ways people use these are they might get the results back, and then they talk about it in a safety committee, and they talk, they discuss the results and say, you know, why do we think we scored this way? And the other way you can do it is just look across locations and say, you know, are there any common themes, or are there any things that we're doing across locations that seem to uh, be a theme of good you know, across the location, something we may want to make sure we replicate, uh, or is there a reason for that being the result and it re being replicated? Uh, the other thing is, are there themes of things that aren't going so well? Are there things in the yellow or the red that keep cropping up um, site over site? There might be something programmatically that you could do to help, um, you know, help eliminate those scores or raise them up. So that is our um, those are our measurement tools. And now we're going to kind of look at the guides. And so this is where you can learn and find resources. So now you've gone through the measurement phase, you've identified where you have some gaps, and now you may want to say, oh, you know what, I need some help with this particular topic. Well, you can go to the guides and see if there are any resources there that might help you. So um, once again, there are some free things in there. There's free webinars, there's some free apps and tools and uh, articles, all kinds of things that are in there to help you. There's also a link. We didn't want to hide anything from the NSC that could help you but is fee-based. So any of our training courses that might pertain to a particular topic, we do show those in there too, but it's completely up to you whether or not you take advantage of those and you know, um, decide to purchase training or uh, a publication, maybe it's a textbook or something that we, um, that we publish that you're interested in as well. So those are there too, but I would say the majority of the things that we offer, we try to make those free and um, from, from a variety of resources, uh, or sources I should say, not just NSC uh, sources. So once again, um, if you're on the website and you have logged in, you're going to see in the right-hand uh, navigation journey guides. And you'll see for JSC joiners only. And that just means this is content that's locked down. So if you're on the public side of the page and you're not seeing this uh, box with all of this great content in it, you're not logged in. So it just means you need to log in first to be able to see it. Um, so what this is, uh, let's see, look at the top. We've got the different tabs, and you'll notice that the tabs line up with our four pillars within the Journey to Safety Excellence, SMS is Safety Management Systems. And then we have a basics, because we know that our, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of you folks out there that don't have a professional safety background but have safety responsibilities. And so you may want to start in the basics tab just to see what's there uh, and peruse the topics. Down below in these green bars that go across, these are the topics or the subtopics within these tabs. So you can click around on the different tabs and then go down to the different topics and find out what the titles are that we have there. And usually in the blue, it will say view article. It will kind of tell you what it is, uh, whether it's training, whether it's an article, whether it's a case study. So I would, I would encourage you to register and take a look around in this, in this section. Um, and see what might, uh, might be helpful to you. So for example, here on this slide, if you clicked on View Article, it's going to open up the, the source and show you exactly what it is. So um, again, if it's training or if it's something that costs, you'll go to the page where uh, you may need to register for something or pay for something first. But we try, like I said, most of the things in here we've tried to make as free resources. Um, so that you should be able to find plenty to, uh, to address your concerns for safety. So that is number four tool. And then five, number five is our Ask Us feature. So again, you look at our uh, web page here, and we've got the Ask Us feature. This is again only for people who've registered for the journey. 
Um, and this is your ability to ask a question via our uh, program email, which is journey at nsc.org. And you would be able to an ask a question, and then that gets sent out to a panel of, um, of experts. Some of them are NSC consultants. Some of them are external to NSC. Um, and so we've got a panel of experts that we send those questions out to, and they can respond to you directly as to their thoughts on a particular matter, or if it's a technical question, getting you an answer. Um, but this is also a place for you to share your ideas and your feedback with us um, who run the program, what you think about the tools and resources here. So we always want to keep improving. We want to continue to add to the resources that are here. So if you come across a particular article, case study, or a really cool tool that uh, we should be aware of, send it to us in this email. Um, just let us know about it, and we can get it added in no time. Um, so that, that is, I believe, all of our five tools. On this last slide, I wanted to just give you a sense for where we are. I said at the beginning of the presentation we are at our two-year anniversary mark. And so we're really trying to reach and attract, like I said, the target audience for us are those who maybe aren't NSC members, of course, we love our members too, so everybody's welcome. But this is our outreach effort to companies that may not know National Safety Council. They might be from smaller organizations that don't have safety folks on staff. And so I wanted to just show you a few statistics on where we are today. As of today, we're over 5,000 total web registrants, and those folks are from organizations or locations that cover over 2.3 million workers. We have those from really small organizations. 23% are from organizations with 100 or fewer employees. But we also, on the, on the other end of the spectrum, our second highest percentage are from um, companies with 10,000 plus employees. So we have both ends of the spectrum and everything else in between. So this isn't really just for a uh, small employer, so if you find yourself you're a larger organization, there's definitely things here for you as well. 61% of our joiners are not NSC members, um, and so that does tell us that we're, you know, we're trying to reach outside of the NSC member network to, um, to gain more people. I know we've worked with OSHA, um, you know, putting messages out on their quick takes and other avenues, uh, CPWR's website. Um, you know, different avenues for us to reach different um, groups of people that we may not have come in contact with before and to let them know about the free tools that are here. 44% um, of our joiners are managers. 37% are actually in non-safety job roles. So that's an important metric for us to track to make sure we know, you know, who do we need to cater to and what level of information do we need to provide. Um, and then just looking at tenure within safety, we've got 37% with five or fewer years of safety experience, so that's almost 40%. And definitely the majority have 10 or fewer years, um, so 58% with 10 or fewer years in safety. So we're, um, again, we've, we've got people, obviously there's another 42% that are 10 plus years or 11 plus years. So we have, we have everybody in, in the system and we have information that will, I think, cater to everybody. But uh, I think the tools, especially the incident rate calculator, um, the perception survey is good for all kinds of companies. So those are, the, those are the things that we have in the journey to safety excellence. I will go to the last slide here so that once again you know where to join. Hopefully you'll take some time if you haven't today to go ahead and join the journey. And if you have any questions at all, um, you can contact me and I've put my email address up here at um, amy.harper amy at nsc.org. So at this time I'm going to turn it back to Jamie. I think she is going to help us with the last minute details. If you have any questions, there's a Q&A. Jamie, you can probably give details better than I can about where they can put questions in if they have questions right now. Thank you, Amy. And to ask a question via the web presentation, select the chat pod in the lower left corner of your screen, and then type and send your question that way. And we have a question in, in your opinion, how is management commitment measured or assessed? Are there assessment tools that can be used to measure this? 
That is a great, great question. Um, management commitment, you know, I think is really looked at very behaviorally. So things like do, do meetings at a management level start with safety? Um, do they talk about safety first in, and not just launch right into production numbers, for example? Um, when managers hit the floor, if you're in a production environment, are they wearing the necessary PPE? Are they kind of walking the walk? Um, there are several different sort of behavioral elements that I look for in management commitment. The safety system assessment, if you go into that, you will notice there are several questions on management commitment and you'll get some ideas for how we're measuring that. Um, so I think that's a good place to look. Um, and that is one assessment tool that I think measures that. And the safety perception survey also, it, while it doesn't call it out specifically, there are questions in there that deal specifically with um, what employees perceive management's commitment to safety being. And so I think there's probably three or four, at least three or four questions that deal with that in the safety perception survey. So um, you can always go in and create uh, like a test location just so you can check out the, the survey. Also, it's, there's a PDF version of it once you've registered. There's PDF versions of both the safety system assessment and the employee perception survey uh, on the website on that tools page. So you'll be able to look at what the questions are and maybe get some ideas on how we, uh, how we measure management commitment. But that's a great, great question. Okay, and our next question is, do the tools evaluate and benchmark against other companies in a particular industry, or are all companies grouped together? For instance, is a hospital compared against an auto manufacturer? Okay, another good question. Um, and for clarification, I will say that the incident rate calculator is the tool that pulls your industry benchmark. That's what the NAICS code will do. So for the incident rate calculator, you're being compared to others in your industry. For the other two tools, <clears throat> you are not being compared to others in your industry, and there's a reason for that. Uh, when we looked at our data and we had captured what the industries were, we did not find that there were significant differences because of the questions we're asking being very, very focused on programmatic elements and not specific risk and how well you've addressed specific risk, there weren't that many differences from industry to industry. So the benchmark is really everybody. So you would be compared to um, you know, whoever's in there, which could be a hospital being compared to an auto manufacturer uh, for those other two. Okay, and it, there appears to be no further questions at this time, so I'll turn it back to you, Amy, for some final remarks. I just oh. want to say thank you, everybody, for taking the time out of your schedule to do this. We'll have the recording. Um, I believe the recording will be sent to you in an email uh, probably within the next 24 to 48 hours. So thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you on the journey. And thank you for joining us for this webinar. We appreciate your attention and participation in today's event. A recording of this webinar will be available at nsc.org forward slash journey in a few days. Thank you again for attending the webinar, and have a great day.